So Elon Musk has curiously uh, quite a mixed hand, really. It's certainly someone who is ambitious. This is a fire hand. It's a long palm and short fingers. There are some squarish elements, and he's got a keen angle of proficiency there, and also uh, an ability to perhaps uh, sing. He's a highly efficient person. And had this headline not been so curved and reaching down towards Luna and forking in the end of a, a well-developed lunar mount there, crossing a high level of intuition with this um, strong Mercury line. This person would be an out-and-out -out materialist, really, especially with this um, the long second middle phalanges uh, of the fingers. But because of, of, of his abilities to um, put action into the many ideas, the many creative ideas he has um, that that sort of prevents him from just sort of hoarding wealth pointlessly and you know I, I've, I've really I, I was sort of a bit confused when I first looked at his hands because I saw what looks like here uh, an inheritance line and um, and I had to kind of stop what I was doing and have a little look and see as to when he inherited lots of money and then I read that uh, well he hasn't actually inherited lots of money his father's still alive but there's lots of um, theories as to, you know, him kind of covering a backstory there because that's what rich people do and they want to be seen to be kind of making something from nothing, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't care about that. That's what I kind of came to the conclusion of. I don't care about any of that. I'm going to look, just look at the hands and say what the hands tell me. Now, I can certainly see some issues with the father, and this is because of a, a very low set Mercury, a space between uh, Jupiter and Saturn. Also, uh, Jupiter kind of curls in a little bit there, sheltering um, beneath Saturn. This is a bit of a clear-cut sign here, all three of these, that there are uh, father issues. That being said, Jupiter is still uh, at a good height here. His ego has not been damaged. In fact, his, his ability to lead is strong. And really, this is the hand of a businessman. Um, because there is a slightly broader at the base. Venus is, is very strong, as is Luna, as I've said. The Mercury line itself, I mean, that you may as well just call that a, a business line here. Look at that. And there's even a second one coming on from up here. What I have noticed, however, is a line of milieu, which is, um, you know, that French word for environment, and it means this person had uh, actually quite a spell of bad luck up until their teens, really, up until uh, around the age of, I don't know, 17, something like that. And that's when fate really changed for this person. Uh, and they learned a great deal. And, and it kind of this period of learning, because it reaches up towards Mercury, coincides with these keen instincts and these are precisely the kind of instincts I would expect from someone who's accumulated so much uh, wealth and success. The success line stems from uh, the headline. Um, forgive me, that's the fate line, sorry. Uh, he's got two fate lines, which is uh, a sign in, it, in itself of a successful person. The success line, it just about comes from uh, beneath the heart line. Uh, and it, it kind of stems from uh, Luna a little bit, and that, and that shows that someone who wants to have success with an audience had to, to uh, show themselves off, show their worth to the world, um, and show what they're capable of, rather than um, work on inner achievements they want to prove to others what they're capable of and I believe that this all stems from uh, you know this issue that I've said before the way that Jupiter finger leans in there this decision making is sort of um, a, a ego is governed by um, their sense of their um, duty their job role their um, I don't want to say ambitions but what they feel that they are destined to do, I suppose, Saturn being uh, the inevitable 
Father Time, Kronos, um, doing the right thing, duty. And this is why the Fate Line, of course, uh, works its way up towards the Saturn Mount underneath the Saturn Finger. It's all in line. And so when we have a Jupiter Finger that kind of curls over like this, it can show, I mean, it's good in a way because it shows that the ego is sheltered beneath their sense of right and wrong, their conscious. So that's good, but also it can show that there's been some critical nature around role models when they were growing up, and that can squash the ego. That's not happened in this case, thankfully for this person. In some ways, it may well have enabled them and uh, created a sense of de dogged determination, which we can see by uh, just how well-developed the base of the palm is in both Venus and Luna. The only thing really I can find lacking about this person is Neptune could be a little bit um, better developed uh, and that would help with this person's communication within their closer relationships and also you know being that Mercury is so low set as well that will have an effect on this person's um, you know closer relationships as well. Mercury it's, in itself is not a short finger when offset with the length of the first the th third and second uh, phalanges of Apollo and that's how you kind of measure up what is a short mercury finger so this person is a good communicator um, and you're a well-rounded individual all, all, all in all respects really and I, I like that uh, the second phalanx is quite long in mercury and that shows that this is a kind of a logical rational thinker but also someone who's able to work out ideas in their mind almost in a sort of mechanical level it's an industrial way of thinking and it it aids in business decisions um it's interesting because generally speaking um you know a business person has quite a sort of shrewd high short headline not this person they've got an abundance of ideas and they're not afraid to use them because the lifeline is actually separate from the headline and that shows someone who's willing to take risks um a radical thinker someone who's thinking way and truly outside of the boardroom whereas others would come up with dependable um numerate kind of reliable uh tasks you know this is someone who's a business person not someone who's willing to um, put their decisions down to uh, logical kind of analytical mathematical decision making like a bank manager would uh, like a stock market analyst would no this is someone who's very different they are looking uh, for opportunities that a lot of others would say well that's a crazy idea what the hell are you doing put all that money into that idea but this person has as i say hugely keen instincts i mean on almost a sort of um extra sensory level which is interesting now when it comes to money this person has you can see the lifeline here you can see the lifeline doubling and you can see it tripling that's unheard of and really you've got a mars line to follow suit as well it's it's a lot is going on here and i think what's actually happening is and i'll try and break it down and i could be wrong it's just my interpretation here is the primary lifeline and it shows their environment it's um uh this is where we see you know health where they move house and and that sort of thing this secondary lifeline is um it's showing um their that actually they're moving environment so the primary one's more to do with health now as this second one sort of takes over and they've moved home the third actually shows um a sort of a double life they're working twice as hard you could say but also it's often associated with uh financial assistance and um uh, a trust fund or someone who's you see it on people's hands who have a partner who earns a lot more money than them because they're supporting them financially so it could be that financial support but it also could just be all of the um you know the passive profit the shares the royalties 
aiding him, and it could be that that's what's actually happening here. This Mars line, that's different altogether. That's completely different. This shows this is his innate, um, inherent kind of personal drive and determination um, to make differences, to make change, and to fight against um, uh, the resistance that he faces in life. And that can be on all levels from physical right down to uh, social. But I do think that a lot of uh, this person's desire and drive to achieve is to prove a point to their father. It's interesting, isn't it, how we come full circle without even realising it. But I think if this person ironed out a lot of um, the issues that they have with their dad, then they would uh, feel a lot more at peace, a lot happier. So this inheritance line here, I don't take much stock in uh, words like this, interpretations like this for all lines, like um, inheritance line, money line, or even uh, Johnny Fincham's porn line. I don't take much stock in these kinds of modern interpretations for lines because the palms, generally speaking, Neanderthal man would have had a a money line or, you know, a porn line or, um, you know, an inheritance line. Whereas these kind of social and physical constructs um, were just not in, in any way um, around, were they? You know, uh, and this is why I don't take much stock in also um, the what they refer to as the money triangle. Because, again, you know, money wasn't around. Neanderthal man had all of these lines, undoubtedly. And so it's just down to a matter of interpretation, which is why, coming back to this inheritance line, it's not necessarily inheritance. It's not necessarily, um, you know, money when it would come to money line. This isn't necessarily a job line. It's a, And this is why I refer to it more accurately as a career, um, a fate line or a career line. It's probably a better... Fate line is probably the best uh, terminology. These are relationship lines and not marriage lines because it's just a more apt interpretation because there is no one clear diagnosis from any one line. You have to look at all of the things uh, to provide some sort of accurate conclusions. So this is not necessarily inheritance line. However, and you know, in fact, it sort of swoops down and cuts across this person's ability to achieve happiness, success, um, and, um, you know, a peaceful kind of reward in life. It looks like there's an obstacle almost related to the career at the age of around 53, 54. Elon Musk is at the moment 52, I believe. So there looks to be an ending, a strict and clear ending towards uh, one of his primary um, paths in life, if you like, coming back to this interpretation, it's not necessarily one job, it's a, his path, his, what he's chosen to do, there's an end, a clear end here, and it seems to be an obstacle, possibly uh, in the way of his happiness as well, but there is this secondary career that took over from the age of around about 33 for this person, and that's going to uh, overlap and uh, take over. And also, to coincide, um, I should make this line a bit smaller because it's a bit chunky. To coincide, look, you can see an island here and uh, a third kind of career line taking off. And that, I feel, spells, um, you know, just how disastrous this event is for this person. So just around the corner, there is a bit of a hurdle here. But as I say, it's all going to work out for this person especially as the career, even right up into this person's uh, 60s, 70s, they will still be having great influences on others in terms of work. So coming back to this money triangle, I mean, the reason why I don't take much stock in it, look, you've got a headline, you've got a career line, and then you've got this mercury line. It's the mercury line that makes the triangle. So what makes this uh, money triangle is actually the Mercury line. It's their intuition. It's their instincts in business. And you see it on the hands of keen businessmen, this. And so there is no such thing to me as a money line. It's it's rubbish. There's no billionaire sign. As I say, Neanderthal man would have had these billionaire signs 
whereas there would never have been billionaires. So it's a matter of interpretation. And I think the a lot of people put these videos out there about these kinds of signs in the palm. If you have this, then this means this. It's not necessarily true. That's not how palmistry works. They put them out there because it's sensational, because it gets views, and it's exploiting people who are in need of guidance. Palmistry is a healing practice, and if anyone out there is not using it for guidance and healing, they're not using it for the right purposes. So I think that about wraps up this reading. We've got a very stubborn man here, um, a great lover of music, I'm sure, uh, and probably has a hobby where there are some tangible results afterwards. I think this person is actually quite good with their hands as well, probably quite a skillful um, craftsman of some sort as, a, as, as far as a hobby goes. Um, as I say, I think there is an obstacle just around the corner for this person, so stay in tuned as to, you know, this person's um, career. I think something will come to a sudden halt, um, but, uh, you know, financially certainly all will be well. And when you've got so much money, when you've got a lot, you have a lot to lose, that this this event that's around the corner for this person really will affect them their their happiness at least is about to be uh obstructed uh, majorly uh, by some event and so it's important for this person to find um happiness in something other than um making money uh, making an impact um, being controversial, you know, um, their love of um, attention and um, the ability to affect the lives of others through their creative endeavours and ability to make money isn't actually making them happy. They're, and, and that's where they're kind of, I feel, caught in a bit of a cycle here. This person needs to uh, look at other ways to provide inner happiness and it all comes back to uh, repairing or accepting um, the relationship with their father so there we have it that's this video let me know what your thoughts and feelings are and um, I owe you all another Sunday case reading because I'm really late with this one so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one